We already learned a lot about the core fundamentals of React, especially this JSX thing, which is super important to get right and to understand. But I also mentioned in the first module of the course that React is all about components. You build your application with components and React is a library which makes building these components so easy. Well, right now we're only using one component. Time to change this. And for this, I'll add a new file in the source folder of our project. I'll actually even add a new folder and I'll name it person with a capital P. This is kind of the convention in React. You don't have to do that, but you give your components, the files where you create them, capital starting characters. And you describe what this component is basically there for. And here I want to render some information about a person. Inside that person folder, which is stored in the source folder, I'll create a person.js file. Again, following this convention of having a capital starting character and describing what this component is about. Now in there, I want to create a component. And we already did this, actually we got this out of the box, in the app.js file by extending the component class from the React library. We can absolutely use this approach and it will become more important later when you also learn about state, which basically allows you to change your component at runtime, you could say. But most of the time, you should use a different form of component or of creating components, a bare function, a simple JavaScript function. Because in its simplest form, a component is just a function which returns some JSX, some HTML, you could say. Now, of course, you can create a function with the function keyword. You could name it person here with a lowercase starting character, which also is kind of convention here. You could use a capital one though. And then you could return some JSX here. You can absolutely do that. You could also use the ES5 syntax of creating a variable, which holds a function, which in the end would result in the same but I will use ES6 in this course, which I strongly recommend doing. It is kind of the best practice when creating React projects. It gives you access to many new and modern features. Hence, I will create a variable, not with the var keyword, but with the const keyword, because I don't plan on changing this variable, effectively making it a constant, and hence we should mark it as such. I'll name it person with a lowercase character. As I said, you could choose person with a uppercase P, but you often see the function name being all lowercase. It should otherwise be the same name as your file name though, or as the component name you wanna use. Then I will assign a value to this variable or constant to be precise, and this should be a function. Now I could again use function here, but actually I want to use the ES6 function syntax, this arrow function syntax. So I will say equal, argument list, arrow, function body. This is just the ES6 equivalent to the function created with the function keyword. It holds some advantages, especially when it comes to the this keyword though. So I strongly recommend using this syntax. If this is brand new to you, now you know it. And in general, you might be interested in also diving into some ES6 courses or learning materials to simply learn about all the awesome features ES6 has to offer, like this one. Back to the syntax though. We effectively have a function here. And as I said, in its simplest form, a component is a function returning some JSX. So let's do that. Let's return some JSX. And we could simply return a paragraph here where I say, I'm a person. Now this alone creates a valid function, which we could use as a component, but we also have to do two other things. Do you have an idea what we have to do? For one, we need to import React because keep in mind, this JSX syntax is transformed to React create element. And to be able to call this method, we need to import React with a capital R from the React package, like this. So just as we do in app.js here. 
We don't need the component though, because here we're not using a class which extends component, instead we're creating a function. We still need to export that function though as the default of this file. Here we export this person constant which holds this function. With that let's save the file so that this dot up here disappears and we only see the cross. And now we can start using this component in other files of our project. Namely in the only other component, our root component we have yet in the app.js file. There I will add an import and I will import person. This name is now totally up to you but it should be the name of your component starting with a capital character from dot slash because it's a relative path the person folder so referring to this folder which is in the same path as the app.js file and there the person.js file, though we can omit the .js because it's added automatically by the build workflow. Now it's important that you give this a name which starts with a uppercase character. You could choose any other name, it doesn't have to be person, though it makes sense to use the name of your component, but it should have an uppercase character. Because in React, in JSX, all elements starting with lowercase characters like div or h1 are reserved for the native HTML elements. So you could create your own component which you name div with a uppercase D. And then React could use that because it wouldn't interfere with the normal div. And for the same reason you should give your person the uppercase character so that React identifies it as a custom component. So let's use person here and we can either use an opening and closing tag like this or since we don't nest anything between, I'll come back to that in the next lectures too, you can also use a self-closing tag with slash and then the greater than sign at the end. With that if you save this file too and you now go back to your application with npm start still running in the terminal, you see I'm a person being rendered below our app component content. This is now coming from our own component and if we inspect it, we see in the end we don't see our custom element, we just see the paragraph we're exporting in that function and that is actually how it should be. So this is now our own component getting used. Of course using it like this is already nice, but what exactly is the benefit of creating it like this instead of simply adding the code right into the app.js file? Let's do more with this component to see that benefit in the next lecture.